Hey guys, today I'm gonna show you how to make this crazy jumping car in Blender. It's gonna be a VFX tutorial and I've been freelancing for the past few years making videos for clients and I wanted to start making YouTube tutorials to show you some cool tips and tricks. First thing, you wanna make sure you're shooting in 45 degree shutter speed. And the best thing you can do on spot is shooting 360 HDRI. It's an app for iPhone. You can use 360 camera, but this is really fast. And you wanna stand where you wanna put the object. So in the middle of the object. And from there, just go with your phone and take the photos. So the first step for me is always in DaVinci creating a new timeline, call it ACs, I don't know, car. And I will go with full HD this time. It's for Instagram. And now we're gonna choose the ACs. Rec 709 just for now, I will tell you later. And drop the footage in. And let's crop it a bit. I don't know, I want to start here and and here for example. Now we're gonna do two exports. But first we're gonna go to AC settings and change the output to no output transform. You can see the colors are weird now, but don't worry about it. Let's go to deliver tab and we're gonna export two types of formats. First will be PNG 16 bit, so we don't lose the highlights. And save this to your fastest hard drive. Make a folder, I already did that. Second one, it will be a PNG sequence. Second one will be EXR and this will be our main footage. RGB half is enough unless you want to do some crazy, extremely precise workflow, but you won't even see the difference. So save this wherever you want to your project folder. And I already did it. So let's move to Blender. Once I'm in Blender, I'm going to set up the project. So go to cycles, change this to GPU. I'm going to use some of my favorite settings. Don't enable motion blur. We will edit in post-production. This is the reels resolution. 25 was the FPS I shot the footage in. And you can look at the sequence, how many files it has. 6 to 5. So let's change this. This will be the length. What we'll be exporting, change this to open EXR, load half, RGBA, none, and overwrite with AC color space always. And you can save this project whenever you will be doing VFX reels. This will be your template. I tried to track manually the footage, but I didn't manage to do that. So I decided to use the new tool Camera Tracker V3 by Default Cube. It's amazing. You can check his tutorial. And in case you don't want to pay $30 for it, but I recommend you should, here is a free alternative by Polyfjord. Once you have the plugin installed, let's choose this folder, the PNG sequence. Once you have the folder loaded, you don't have to mess with these options. Just enable the CUDA option if you have an NVIDIA GPU. The shake and zoom options are for footage shot on iPhone, for example. You can run the tracker. Okay, once the tracking is done, you will have only these two things created. If you want to make the point smaller, go to modifiers, visualizer and make it point 002 for example. Now what you're gonna do, you have to create a empty and drop to set parent. I already did that so I'll just enable empty and you want to move the empty to align with the grid so you rotate it any how you want and then when you go to side view you can check the floor is oriented properly. Now when you press 0, you want to make sure the track is well done. And of course we are going to add the background source to our camera. And it's going to be the EXR sequence. Press A. Open image. And now put the opacity to 1. And auto refresh. And AC color space. And now when we move, it will be very laggy but when we go out of the camera view, it will be smooth. If you want, you can export H.264 for just working with it and it won't be so laggy. 
Now we can hide the MeshPoint cloud and create a plane for our ground and let's test it. In the wireframe view up here, we can, for example, put this on this rectangle and test if, but don't move it on the Z axis, only if it's not aligned properly. And now we can see if it's staying there and yeah, it looks really nice. So now we extend the ground, make it as big as you can and move it, let's set this view and move it on the Y axis. So we have a long road where the car will be coming. And now instead of the classic shadow catcher that Blender offers, we'll make a texture on this plane, an image sequence, and we will use the EXR. And I will show you what happens. Change this to mirror, auto refresh, ACs, and texture coordinate. Now switch to rendered view and put this and use window for it. And I have this trick from Polyfjord, who I already mentioned, and his tutorial is amazing. So you want to choose the camera, pass part out and make it one so we don't get disturbed by the repeated background. And now let's add a diffuse node, roughness zero. And now you can see the difference, there's a line, but that's not the problem. We're gonna go to edit mode, choose edge and extrude this edge to Z axis. Press E and Z and drag your mouse. And now go back to object mode. And now very important, apply all transforms and add bevel modifier and make the width bigger. Make segments like 12 and shade smooth. Now go back to camera, now it's even. And make sure all of the footage is covered with the background we created. Now we are gonna set the sun as it's in the footage. It's coming from this side, it's backlit. I prefer filming with backlight, it looks really nice. And we're gonna add a sun and rotate it so it has the same angle. And now let's make the power more and just by eye, okay? And now when you add any object to the scene, you have beautiful light, like it was there. You can tweak the sun if you want, but the shadows here should be sharp since it's close to the object, as you can see on some other objects. And as the shadow is further, it gets softer. So this is correct. Now let's test it with metallic material and you have really nice reflections. But one thing, I'm gonna create a sphere, okay? Now we're gonna switch in the shader editor to world and I already set up my HDRI so you can just copy these settings and if you have the node wrangler enabled in the add-ons you can press ctrl T and these two things will appear and we want to rotate the HDRI so it fits here. So I already did mine, so we're set. Now to add some realism, you want to see the cameraman in reflection. <laughs> so I use this photo of me and remove the background in Photoshop. So you want to make a plane, new material and just drop the image with alpha here. And I already did that so you can copy my settings. And now you just put the cardboard in front of the camera, go to object properties and disable camera here. It will be only visible in reflections. Now we select cardboard, select camera and control P to parent. And they will go together everywhere. 
Okay, the scene is set up and you want to import any object you would like to add. I will show you my car which I made. It was a free model downloaded and I just disconnected the car body from the wheels, lifted it up and added this scissor system. I created a special rig to make it possible to move it up and down. It was quite challenging. If you want, we can do a deep dive video on this. Then what I did was I selected all of the wheel parts and parented them to an empty I created. It, the empty has to have the origin in the middle of the wheels. And what I did was add a driver, this one, and whenever I move it on Y location, they turn. So it's a cool thing. You can look here. Okay, the most fun part was animating these scissors. So I have a handle here and I just went to the start, moved it up, added a keyframe, then I moved further, moved it down, edit keyframe and so on. And then in the graph editor, I selected the handle and go to modifiers, add noise modifier and just mess with these settings and it will jump on its own. And what I did then was just move the whole car on Y axis, set the starting position, then move it a bit, set this position so it moves according to the camera and then I played with the node graph so it's smoother I added this curve and so on you just have to mess with this there's not really a hack so you have to play with it for a few hours okay when everything is done you can move to compositing tab and render image first so we can see the backdrop by the way by pressing V and ALT V you can zoom in and out and hold ALT and middle mouse button and you can move. So we want to add glare and just copy my settings but play with this threshold to make sure it only affects the highlights and with the strength also. Now go to the output, choose a folder where you want to save it and render animation. Once it's rendered, open After Effects, DaVinci or whatever you prefer. Add a new composition with the same resolution, same frame rate, duration doesn't matter. And go to Project Settings, CUDA, Color, ACES and 16-bit. And now File, Import, File. And we're gonna choose the first sequence import. Don't forget to check interpret footage frame rate because sometimes Blender changes it to 30. Now drag it here. Change this to Rec 709 just so you can see the colors are correct. And what I like is adding real smart motion blur. But you can use your favorite blur. It can be in DaVinci, whatever you like. And now just set the out point, press N. You can change this to ACES RAW and CTRL M and, and the settings should be EXR, no compression and just choose your folder and render. Now you can jump back to your DaVinci project, drop the render folder in and change the timeline settings color output to REC 709. And now we can tweak the colors to whatever we like. And of course make some sound design. Then just export this in MP4 H264 for Instagram. And a useful tip, make sure the file size doesn't exceed 120 megabytes because then Instagram compresses it. So set the bitrate according to the file size. I tried to make this tutorial really straightforward and effective just to show my workflow but this is my first tutorial so bear with me please and leave a comment if you would like me to deep dive into some of the things I did there. Thank you.